Okay, dear colleagues, you're welcome to the second online session of gynecologic laparoscopic surgery held by MB Turkey Academy. Uh, this is the second online session. I hope you like the first one. That's told by Professor Dr. Ara Çalışkan. And at the end, we are hoping to see you in Istanbul. Today we will talk about the access techniques using laparoscopic surgery. Uh, it's an important issue because if you can't access the abdominal cavity, you will not do the surgery. It's an important issue because at 50% of the complications during laparoscopic are being happened during this access uh, beginning of the laparoscopy. So you have to access the cavity safely, first of all. This is the beginning of the surgery. Of course, laparoscopy is a minimally invasive surgery. It has Lots of benefits, uh, less pain, the patient returns to normal life earlier, and you have fewer post-operative complications, which are compared to open techniques. So you have to uh, access the abdominal cavity before any laparoscopic procedure. During this access, uh, uh, these laparoscopic instruments tra traverse the abdominal wall, which include the skin, the spontaneous fat, variable myofascial layers, reperitoneal fat, parietal and parietal peritoneum. So you have to uh, know the anatomy of the abdominal wall for a safe insertion of the laparoscopic devices. This is really important. The midline of the abdominal wall is the best place to access the abdominal because the, the, the this place is the way of the vessels and nerves, and this is the preferred initial access site. As you see in the picture, uh, the layers of the abdominal wall in the midline include the skin, the spontaneous fat, and facial layer, which is called the linea alba. And this is the linea alba, is the coalitions of the anterior and the posterior rectus sheet. And if you will look at the structures from cranial to cardiac in the midline abdomen, in the abdominal structures, you will get liver, stomach, transverse colon, omentum, small intestine, sigmoid colon, and bladder. And before the surgery, if you decompress the stomach and the bladder by catheters, you will minimize the risk of injury for these intra-abdominal organs. And that's really important. Which access locations we will uh, use during this laparoscopic surgery? Umbilicus, of course, umbilicus is the most common location for establishing pneumal peritoneum with either various needle or open technique. Open technique is called, you know, Hassan technique. Uh, and the umbilicus is the fusion of facial layers and it's divided of spontaneous fat. It's the thinnest plate that you should enter the abdomen. There are the, and the uh, other points that you should use are uh, is one of them is Palmer's point, which is three centimeters below the left postal margin and the mid clavicular line. Uh, you can do the initial spin uh by the side. Uh, when you cannot access the abdomen by a umbilical site, 
so you can use the Palmer's point. And the either points are the Huang point and the giant point. Giant point is uh, in the at the anterior axillary line. That's at the umbilicus level and three and a half centimeters above the uh, anterior superior iliac spine, as you see in the picture. Which technique we will use? That's the important point of this issue. We can enter the abdomen by an open, that is the Hassan technique, or by a close technique, that's the virus needle uh, technique. As I, I told, the initial access most commonly is performed at the umbilicus, but if you, you can use open technique uh, on the abdominal wall anywhere, it can be performed anywhere on the abdominal wall. Uh, and if there is a mesh at the abdominal wall, you will avoid it. Of course, you wonder which technique are, uh, am I using. Uh, let me say it at the beginning of the session, I'm using this open Hassan technique. I'm always doing open laparoscopy, and I trust this technique more than the closed technique because the closed techniques are blind techniques uh, and you do not see the structures behind the abdominal wall by closed techniques. Uh, but in open technique, custom technique, you see what you are doing, what you are cutting, and which abdominal structures or either an addition behind the wall, you can see it. It's an open technique, of course, and the usually location site is peri umbilical and we do the incision under direct vision when you see all the layers of the abdominal wall and uh, this technique can be used uh, anywhere on the abdominal wall of course a little according to your uh, surgery skills the procedure is Time is last a little bit longer. And of course, you make an incision, you create a larger facial defect, and you, you have to close it at the end of the surgery. So how do we do the open laparoscopy? First, you make a incision in the skin, and you dissect the tiny sweat bluntly, by a clamp, if you see any vessel, you can cauterize them. So when you see the fascia, you hold it with clamps. Then you have to incise the fascia until the, a small peritoneal fat is identified. And after that, this is the important trick of this technique. You have to place stage sutures at the end of the facial edge. So you can use these stages to secure the port uh, and to prevent its displac displacement during the surgery. After that, you bluntly dissect the pre peritoneal fat and you bring the peritoneum up into the wound by a clamp, hemostat clamp. This is the second important part of this technique. And when you get the peritoneum, you incise the peritoneum and you get into the abdominal cavity. And then you sweep the underside of the abdominal wall with your finger. And you are sure that there is no omentum or bowel. And for, confirm that there is no addition behind the abdominal wall. And later you place the trocar, blunt and trocar. You can use Hasson trackers and uh, you secure the tracker with stage tools, or mostly they have, if you are using a Hasson tracker, they have a balloon tip tracker. You can inflate the balloon 
and you attach the gas, mostly you are using the, you know, carbon dioxide and inspire the abdomen. At the end of the procedure, you remove the tasters or that you can use them to close the facial defect. Two important part of this technique is you incise the fascia and also you see the peritoneum and you incise the peritoneum also. You see that we are usually using the umbilical location inside the fascia. You put the stastures and then when you get into the abdominal wall, you use your finger to secure the, there is no bowel or momentum behind the wall. So then you place the trocar. According to cross laparoscopy, of course, you know, this virus needle, named for Janus virus, you use this virus needle to puncture the abdominal wall. It was popularized by Ralph Palmer in the 20th century, and it was not used for this issue at the beginning. It originally developed to give patients with tuberculosis to make iatrogenic pneumothorax so without damaging the underlying lung parenchyma. Then you use the various needle and the needle enters the peritoneal cavity. The clinician uses surgeon usually his or his a click, a click. That's the sound of the protective sheet when it recoils. This is a really fast technique, according to open technique. Uh, it allows a quick entry to the abdomen. Uh, it shortens the surgery time. The insertion site of this virus needle is usually combolicus. But you have to be careful for the increased major vascular complications with the open technique because the distance between the umbilical stalk and the artery is generally less than four centimeters. And you can see a major vascular complication. So you have to retract the abdominal wall upward. So it will be more safer. You can use various other than the other side than the umbilicus. When you cannot use the umbilicus, uh, which points you can use the points in the midline, medial coastal margin line, left intercostal space, palmar's point, bladder boulder of the rectus muscle. At the iliac crest, you can use giant point. So B, you can use this virus needle to access the abdominal cavity. If you cannot use the umbilical side. How will we access the peritoneum by virus needle? You have to estimate the length of the virus needle to reach the peritoneal cavity first. In the end, you make an incision at the skin and the spontaneous tissue. You grasp the fascia by a clamp and you elevate the abdominal wall. Once you use a subcostal site, uh, this, this part is really important. Uh, do not grasp the skin and elevate it because it may uh, increase the failed entry percentage. So always hold the fascia and elevate the abdomen by holding the fascia. And you insert the needle with an 45 degree angle toward the 
pelvis. During this procedure, you feel two pops. The first one occurs when you pass the abdominal fascia, and the second one occurs when you pass the peritoneum. You have to feel this to secure the procedure. And the, at the end, when you enter the peritoneal cavity, uh, the needle will click, as I told you before, the, it will recoil. So when you enter the abdomen by a virus needle, it's a closed laparoscopy technique, and you don't see the behind, whether you are in the abdomen or not, you are in the peritoneum or not, there are some checking issues to decide this. One is saline aspiration and injection. You can attach a syringe at the end of the virus needle. First, you aspirate to, to, to be aware that there is no return of any uh, blood or any other thing, uh, then you, if there, then, then nothing comes, then you inject the saline to peritoneal space. And if the saline is injected freely without resistance, so you, you can be sure that an intraperitoneal location of the tip of the virus needle is assumed. One other method is to confirm virus needle placement is hanging drop method. You drop a saline into the open virus needle hub and you elevate the abdomen. So the drop of the water is drawn into the needle because, you know, there is negative intra-abdominal pressure. So drop of the saline comes downward by that negative intra-abdominal pressure. So you can confirm it by this also. One other method is to confirm various needle placement is you measure the intraperitoneal pressure, which also we are using uh, when we do closed laparoscopy seldomly. You can attach the gas at the end of the various needle. You can measure the intraabdominal pressure by the laparoscopic insufflator, it has to be below the 10 millimeters mercury. This suggests that you are in the abdomen. The tip of the virus in the leading the abdomen. Once you get into the peritoneum, you access and the peritoneum, you begin insufflation. Of course, the Gas that we use during this insulation is typically is carbon dioxide. And of course, uh, properly, if you have properly placed the virus at the abdomen, it will allow a free flow of gas. Also, when you begin insulation, you will get a tympani with percussion in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen at first. These also, these procedures also, confirms that you are in the abdomen. After you supply the pneumoperitoneum, you will place the first initial port during this procedure. So you remove the virus needle and you can place the first port into the virus needle track or an alternative side. And also, you have to avoid a trocar direction or death that could result in injury to the aorta or iliac artery. This is important, really, because 50% of the complications happen during this intra-abdominal access at the first step. And these complications are really serious complications. And most of the way, major vascular complications are happen during this procedure at this time. 
So you have to uh, hold the troika sharp rather than it's tough. This may be help you to prevent uncontrolled depth, or you may arrange speed of the penetration of the troika by this way. When you insert the troika first port, you hear a rush of gas that's coming from the peritoneal cavity. And that indicates that the proper trocar depth has been reached. So we throw the, you draw, we throw the trocar to advance the port cannula, one to two centimeters. And you are sure placement within the intra-abdominal cavity. And after that, you insert the camera, the laparoscope, into the part. And you confirm that. There is no injury in the intra-abdominal organs. First, you have to check if there is any injury. Because if this is a blind technique, you didn't see the tip of the various needle, you didn't see the tip of the uh, trocar. Uh, what you see is after the you enter by telescope and you have to check the intra-abdominal organs before you begin the surgery. So which technique will they use? That's really controversial. Uh, there is a thing like all surgeons will use the technique which they have the most experience and most familiar with, but uh, that's not uh, an issue for me. I use open person technique. Uh, I seldomly do closed laparoscopy. I seldomly use wireless needle. I seldomly use direct trocar entry because all of them are blind surgeries. You don't see what you are doing. And even if they have told in the data, in the literature, that there is no uh, difference between, uh, there is no difference uh, about complications between these techniques. techniques uh, I don't really uh, believe that uh, because uh, in closed surgery, in blind surgery, major vascular complications must increase because you don't see what you are doing. When you are insulating the abdominal by carbon dioxide, you will uh, first, of course, the pressure will begin below the 10 millimeters, sorry, millimeters. Mercury, uh, if you begin inflating and the pressure rapidly increases, then the needle or the port may be displaced or amplitude. Uh, when you are inflating the abdominal cavity, you will grasp and gently elevate the abdominal wall, and this will dislodge any momentum of bowel that may be blocking of the, the opening of the needle or the port. So you are holding and elevating the abdominal wall when you are inflating the abdominal cavity. Of course, the target pressure of the abdominal cavity is, before you begin with surgery, is 12, between 12 and 15 millimeter mercury for the preference of surgeon. Uh, and, and also the visual and manual, manual examination for example, in the, in the upper population, uh, may confirm the adequate pneumonia peritoneum that, that has been achieved. But do not uh, pass 15 millimeters mercury, mercury. Because when you are establishing pneumonia peritoneum by carbon dioxide gas, during its inflation, you increase the heart rate mean arterial pressure, 
also system again pulmonary vascular resistance you decrease the vital capacity of the pulmonary system you decrease the venous return you decrease the preload also you decrease the cardiac output by this insufflation but if you don't pass the 50 millimeters into abdominal pressure uh, these physiologic effects are not that dramatic according to the American Society of Anesthesiologists at the class 1 and class 2 patient. And when you finish the surgery, all of these effects are diminished. That's important. When you get into the abdominal cavity, you place the second port according to surgery you are doing. For example, in this picture, you see the four sites for total laparoscopic hysterectomy surgery. So secondary force must always be placed with the after the abdomen has been inflated by carbon dioxide and out under direct vision. When you put the laparoscope inside, you have to see the abdominal wall first and you plan a secure site for the second port. Mostly the surgeon stands opposition, opposite to the surgery that he will do. And at the end of the surgery, mostly in the open technique, custom technique, uh, a port of 10 millimeters or more, you have to close the fascia. As you know, when you are beginning with open laparoscopy, you have put the stage sutures. You can use those stage sutures to close. But less than 10 millimeter port size, um, you do not have to close the fascia. If you have passed the mesh side, so you have to also to close that facial defect by permanent suture. You may have some problems during these access procedures. One of them is failed entry. If then you place the various needle, bile, enteric contents, or blood may return uh, and during this situation you will not uh, move the needle it should be left in its place and you will enter the peritoneum at an uh, alternative site don't move the needle when you enter the abdomen from an alternative site so you can see the injury the tip of the wireless needle so you can manage this complication easily by that you can have bleeding if bleeding is significant always pass to the open laparoscopy and after that you have to inspect the failed entry site for any associated injury and if you see any injury you have to repair it and if you fail to enter by the virus needle into the abdomen without any complication you can reattempt the surgery reattempt at the same access site you can use it same access site if there is no complication. Force may leak during this procedure. Gas may leak during this procedure. It's mostly due to a uh, facial defect or to larger excess port angulation. You can use balloon key trockers during this troubles or you may use additional stures or you can place a towel clamp around the stroker 
and it will help you stop this flaking part. One other trouble may be sliding port. If the port slides within the abdominal wall, it may be needed to reposition or you can secure it with additional secure. You can use a drain type stitch during this procedure and you can easily solve this problem. One other trouble may be during this access as the bleeding port during your, this access to the intra-abdominal cavity, to the peritoneum. The vessels of the abdomen can be injured. And also this bleeding may not be become apparent after you have removed the trocar. Uh, so uh, you have to inspect during and following removal of the port. First, you inspect when you get into the peritoneum, and when you finish the surgery, you also check the port size for bleeding. So, if there's any bleeding, you usually manage this bleeding by electrocautery, uh, and sometimes you may need to be you may need to enlarge the uh, skin incision to control this bleeding. Uh, alternatively, you can use your stitch. So the place into the abdominal wall under direct laparoscopic visualization. One other trouble that you can see during this access procedure, you may lose the perineal peritoneum. All potential sites of loss, this loss should be assessed. You have to check the gas supply. You have to check the in insulation tubing. You have to check the insulator. You have to check port site and you have to check valves for this loss of minimal peritoneum. So again, you can easily solve this trouble also. One other problem is extra peritoneal insulation during this access. Subcutaneous periperitoneal or omental insulation can occur. First, you have to confirm the placement of the virus or Hassan tracker. You have to be sure that it's intraperitoneal. If you see this problem, you must see that abdominal wall will be stand, but it's not tympanic. Instead, you get a crepitus sound. Subcutaneous carbon dioxide insulation may increase, may affect the pulmonary functions. So you have to notify the anesthesia for this problem. Uh, but small amounts of extra peritoneal layer is usually quick at the absorb once you get into the intra-abdominal cavity by intra-abdominal, intra-peritoneal insufflation. Uh, but in older patients, this James carbon dioxide can progress rapidly and quickly reach the chest wall, neck, and face. So you have to be careful that you are insufflating the peritoneum, the abdomen. One other problem is of course, you see at the end of the surgery, this access port size pain, therefore, or post-operative shoulder pain, post-operative polar chain, it's a little bit repair pain, and it's due to the irrigation, irritation of the diaphragm by fluid, blood, or carbon, carbonic acid. And, and if you reduce the insufflation rate and insufflation pressure at the beginning, it may help you some little. And also you can uh, use the techniques at the end of the surgery. You have to remove the carbon dioxide gas from the peritoneum. Uh, optimally, we can place the patient in a number position. 
condition, you may inst instill intraperitoneal fluid, for example, normal saline. You can use the in you can use an intraperitoneal drain. Maybe you can apply local anesthetic to the peritoneal cavity. You can use all these procedures. One other problem is inadequate exposure. You cannot do the surgery if you cannot see, of course. If the exposure or the dissection is difficult or it's unsafe, do not move, do not go on the surgery. Use additional drug cards to maintain patient safety. You have to do the surgery easily. So if you those additional trocars or other, you may change the camera port, camera side. This will help you to see more accurately. And that was the last slide. Uh, and of course, I'm using open Hudson technique, and I'm advising you to this open Hudson technique because it's more safe than for me than the close technique either by wireless needle or by direct trocar entry or by radially expanded trocar entry all the other entry techniques are line techniques mm, even if that the data uh, tells us that there is no difference between these techniques uh, I don't believe that data more uh, because you have to do the surgery safely and you have to see what you are doing. If you have any questions, we can answer them. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. We hope to see you in Istanbul for the lip surgery and the, to listen the rest of the course. I hope we see each other in Istanbul. <laughs>